Welcome to Wednesday, November the 11th. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger from Holy Cross Lutheran Church and School in Saginaw, Michigan, celebrating in this time of worship the praise of Almighty God, His love in Christ, and the hope we carry each and every day. For those that received our congregational email with the hymn lyrics, please turn to that resource. Or if you have a Lutheran service book hymnal available to you, please join us in our opening hymn, Hymn 644, The Church's One Foundation. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Please bow your heads in this time of confession. 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your commandments require us to have no other gods before you. Too often we look to the world for guidance and answers, often before coming to you first in prayer for your counsel and direction. In the midst of many temptations to commit idolatry, help us to fear, love, and trust in you above all things. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join with me in the confession of our common Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with hymn number 664, Fight the Good Fight. from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We begin a new sermon series today with the theme, Gods at War. A theme that today challenges us, as we heard in the collect for this service, 
the ever-present temptation and sin of idolatry. How many false gods are at war against us every day of our life? Imagine the following scenario. A man, for some time now, has been coughing constantly. The cough has been keeping him up each night for several nights in a row. His cough interrupts every conversation he has that lasts longer than 30 seconds. His cough is so unrelenting that he finally gives in and calls his family doctor, who has been a dear close friend for several decades. After running many different tests, the doctor comes to the inescapable conclusion and diagnosis. Advanced lung cancer, inoperable, untreatable, terminal. The doctor calls his friend and his friend's wife answers the phone and they have also known each other all those many years. She asks the doctor what is wrong with her husband, and the man's wife requests that she be the one to tell him. She simply asks the doctor, out of an abundance of love for her husband, if he could at least provide a prescription for a strong enough cough medicine so that her husband could actually get some rest at night. Now, this man is obviously delighted in the fact that just taking some simple cough medicine seems to have taken away most of his cough, and he begins sleeping better and begins feeling better. For at least for the time being, as far as he knows, it is the simple prescription of cough medicine that has solved the problem. Meanwhile, the unrelenting, aggressive form of lung cancer continues its deadly work. Cancer was the problem. The cough was only a symptom. Every week, Christians live with symptoms, unaware of what the real problem is in their life. They live each day and they even come to church struggling, hurting, stressing, cheating, lusting, spending, worrying, quitting, self-medicating, avoiding, and searching. A few times they might think to go to their pastor and share their struggles. And at those times they unload all of their frustrations. They express to their pastor their discouragement. They talk about the wounds in their life. They confess their sins and they simply expect that hearing words of forgiveness will take away the problem. But remember, what they are feeling are only symptoms of a deeper, darker problem. When I've talked to people during difficult por portions of their life, they quickly share what they believe to be the real problem. They've already thought it through and they've come up with their own diagnosis. The problem is oftentimes what they've only discovered are symptoms. The real problem still escapes them. Oftentimes, the symptoms that are shared are all common to the same problem, idolatry. Idolatry is the most discussed sin in the Bible. And yet the whole subject of idolatry seems to people today so commonplace that it is almost obsolete. That command, many people think, was for them, not for now. But when a soccer or baseball, basketball or football game prevents anyone or a family from worshiping in church, that's idolatry. When we wake up, but we're just too tired, so we decide we'll just sleep in. No one will miss us. It's just one week. That's idolatry. 
when company has come to visit us and we decide to take the Sunday morning off because we were up late Saturday night visiting. That's idolatry. When we take a vacation from school or work and worship, that's idolatry. When we make sure that all of our bills are paid, most of the bills are amounts because of personal choices, and then we give and return to the Lord whatever's left, that's idolatry. When we are comfortable with what we know and understand from God's word rather than seeking to grow in knowledge and understanding by daily Bible study and faithful weekly worship, that's idolatry. Anything in our life that stands next to or is placed before God, where God is second, is idolatry. Idolatry is not some vague Old Testament concept meant for other people at another time. Idolatry is not an outdated teaching that simply has no practical application to our 21st century way of living. Idolatry is the greatest enemy we face every day of our life because we often never recognize it as a real threat, as the real problem, a clear and present danger to our faith and followers of Jesus. Idolatry is always a damnable offense against God, and idolatry is punishable by eternal life in hell because it violates God's supreme commandment. Have no other gods before me. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. When we struggle, hurt, stress, cheat, lust, spend, worry, quit, self-medicate, avoid, search for answers all on our own, put trust and confidence in worldly directions before taking them to God first in prayer. When we live each day with struggles and challenges, looking to point our finger at what we think is the problem, how often do you really hit the mark? If you are taking your every need, every worry, every challenge, every temptation to God in prayer, then you are looking somewhere else. And that is the sin of idolatry. The most frequent sin we commit every day of our life. Now, idolatry does, in fairness, seem like such an ancient teaching that many have simply made it and treat it as irrelevant. But it's the number one issue in the Bible, and that fact alone should sound warning bells for us. More than 50 of God's laws in the first five books of the Bible are directed at idolatry. So as we look at our daily life through the lens and the teachings of the Bible, a singular truth is revealed, the real problem. There's a war going on. The God of idolatry is at war against us. And the God of idolatry should never be underestimated. Over the next few weeks, we'll be discussing how those false gods war for the very throne of your heart. There's a lot at stake, and we'll discuss that in the weeks to come. Everything we do, every relationship we have, every hope, every dream, every wish, depends upon which God is going to win the battle, the war, and your heart and life. Idolatry is not just about statues, carvings, cosmic deities with strange names. The gods of idolatry 
take identities and forms that are ordinary, every day, and so appealing, we never consider them as idols. Our daily activities, checkbooks, credit cards, debit cards, internet search engines, possessions can all easily become idols. They can become the gods that we worship because they direct our daily living. In Joshua 24, beginning at verse 14, Joshua is the new leader of the Israelites, and he gives the Israelites a clear choice. In fact, he gives them three options as they prepare to cross into the Promised Land. You can serve the false gods your fathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt. Or you can serve the false gods of the Amorites. Or you can serve the Lord. He challenged them, make the choice. Choose this day whom you will serve. And whatever choice you make, you own it completely all of your life. Every day you have that choice to make in your heart and mind. Whom will you serve today? When you rise tomorrow, whom will you serve? Which God will win your heart for that day? Which God will consume your thoughts? Which God of this world will you follow? There are so many false gods that war against your heart and mind and life. So let these closing questions help you identify the false gods that are at war for your time, your talents, and your godly treasures. What are you most disappointed with? In life, what you are most disappointed with generally signals where you are putting hope and trust. Where you put your hope reveals the God you worship. What do you sacrifice all of your time and all of your income for? The word serve appears seven times in Joshua's challenging words to the Israelites. Who or what you serve is revealed today by how you spend your time and how you spend those godly treasures. Who and what you serve today reveals your God. Where or who do you turn to when you're hurting? Your first choice will create a pattern of dependence in future choices. It will determine a relationship it will determine who or what you trust and inevitably who or what is your worship. So the answer to this question will also reveal your God. We have choices to make today, tomorrow, and every day. Will we follow the gods of time, convenience, priority, comfort, ease, or will we choose to serve the Lord our God and worship him only? The challenge the Lord God laid at his people through Joshua is exactly the same challenge we are met with today. It's a choice of your heart, your mind, your life. Choose this day whom you will serve. When you wake up tomorrow, choose tomorrow whom you will serve. Choose to serve the Lord, child of God. Choose to serve the Lord your God every day of your life. Choose to serve the Lord your God even when times are difficult, in times of struggle, in times of need, not just when life is easy. Smash the false gods in your life. Turn away from the temptations the world continues to offer. Make the intentional choice to dismiss 
worldly solutions, for the world cannot solve your greatest problem, sin. And your most frequent temptation from sin is idolatry. Choose now, for this day, whom you will serve, and serve with all your heart and mind and life. Choose to worship God alone this day and each day, for anything else is idolatry. Amen. As part of our prayers for this day, we will include a special prayer in observance of Veterans Day. Please bow your heads as we continue with the prayer of the church. Holy and most merciful God, you have taught us the way of your commandments. Pour out your grace into our hearts. Cause our lives to bear fruit, being ever mindful of your mercies and your laws, that we may always be directed to your holy will and daily increase in love and obedience towards you. Enable us to resist all evil and to live a godly life. Help us to follow Jesus Christ, to walk in his steps until we possess in whole the kingdom prepared for believers in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us this land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of living. Save us from acts of violence and division among our citizens and every evil word and action. Bless our elected leaders who faithfully serve at this time, especially Donald, our president, Gretchen, our governor, and all elected leaders, that they may be found faithful, trustworthy, and wise in their leadership, that they may seek to serve the needs of all. Bless and guard the lives of those who serve in law enforcement, men and women who rise each day to provide protection and assistance to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, you are our only help in time of need. In these difficult times, in the midst of a global pandemic and of the coronavirus, especially bless with health and strength all medical professionals who are extensions of your healing hand to all in need. Hear the prayers we lift from our hearts for those we know in need of healing and recovery. Holy God, if it pleases you, restore them all to health or grant them the grace to endure their trial with courage and hope in your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer a special prayer on Veterans Day. Dear Father in heaven, first we thank you for the freedom you offer to all sinners through the cross of Jesus Christ the altar on which your holy Lamb of God willingly laid down his life, so that all who would believe in him as their Lord and Savior can live free from the curse and eternal condemnation of sin through forgiveness and salvation. Thank you that in our nation today we are free to worship, we are free to pray, we are free to read your word, we are free to speak, we are free to share. Yet we understand how quickly these freedoms can disappear. Give us an increased awareness of the spiritual battle we face each and every day 
and help us to stand strong in you and your purpose for our lives on earth. Thank you that as believers we can be assured that you never leave us, for you are our rock, our refuge, our mighty fortress, and our strength. Now, on this Veterans Day, we especially thank you for the brave who have fought and continue to fight so courageously for our nation. We ask for your covering of protection and blessing and peace for them and their families. Be with the men and women in uniform who serve our communities and nation every day. We also ask that you provide your protection to them, that you would be their guiding force and lead their way and be their rear guard who keeps them safe from behind. We ask you to draw them to yourself amidst any danger they face in a world so darkened by conflict, and yet you provide light for the path that leads to their hope in Jesus. When voices of hate rise up against them, silence those tongues that speak out. When the plans of the enemy rise up to cause them to stumble, confuse and defeat those plans. When the forces of evil rise up to strike them down, we ask that you would intervene and rout them in confusion. Help our active duty men and women today to walk wisely and to remain covered in your spiritual armor provided through your holy word. Give them godly discernment and awareness of what the dangers are that are close by. Help them to be men and women of prayer, realizing that prayer is where their greatest help comes. Help them to stay united and strong, bold and resolute, determined and unwavering. And once more, we thank you for all who have worn the uniform in the past of this nation. And we remember them who have served faithfully our cities, our nation, our people all around the world. Bless the memory of their service. Bless the friendships with comrades in arms who still support one another today. Give us every opportunity to not just thank them, but honor them as walking, living heroes of our nation and grant them the honor they are due every day. We offer this special prayer for Veterans Day in the powerful name of Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Savior Jesus, in your holy name, we have lifted up our prayers to our Father in heaven. But we continue to ask in these troubled times in our nation that your Holy Spirit would turn more sinners to call on your name, to humble themselves, to pray and seek the Father's face, to turn from their sinful, selfish ways, so that their prayers may be lifted in your name and heard by our Father in heaven that their sins would be forgiven and healing may come to our land and to the world. So into your hand we commend now all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and in the holy name of Jesus, give you peace. Amen. We conclude our service today with the singing of hymn 666, O little flock, fear not the foe. Oh, you're crazy. 